On behalf of AI Media and EEG, I'm very happy to welcome you to the NAB virtual event webinar series. I'm excited to introduce Tony Abraham, CEO of AI Media and Phil McLaughlin, CEO of EEG. Tony? Thanks very much, Regina. My name's Tony Abrahams. I'm the co-founder and CEO of AI Media, and I'm devastated that we can't all be together uh, at NAB in person this year, but we've tried to do the next best thing, which is to uh, make all of our great content uh, available uh, to all of you uh, virtually. And I'm delighted to be uh, joined by a person who's very well known to almost all of you, I'm sure, uh, the CEO of uh, EEG, Phil McLaughlin. Phil, how are you? Oh, uh, uh, very good, Tony. Uh, glad to be with you. Uh, and I think uh, you know one thing that's obviously changed since uh, since the last time we appeared at NAB is that uh, AI Media and EEG have uh, have joined forces. Uh, and and Phil, after running that business, um, you know for for 25 odd years, what what had you decide to uh, join forces with AI Media? I guess uh, two questions: uh, why now, um, and why AI Media? This has been very uh, heavy on my mind the last couple of years as to where the company that's built this uh, this level of excellence and and uh, you know and momentum in the U.S. market where we can move from here. And the two things that happened is that we are finding that we uh, you know that we needed more international exposure as a company, and we also with our movement uh, into captioning services, you know, with our Lexi automatic captioning product. Uh, we had become uh, a, a significant service provider in the U.S. market, and from that standpoint, for the last five years, you know, we've we've had the pleasure of dealing with AI Media as a as a trusted partner, uh, you know, a partner in with customers in both the U.S., uh, you know, Canada, uh, and all around the world. And uh, what, what we thought would happen here, which is very much coming to fruition now, is that we could, you know, join together with AI media where we can combine our products, where we have almost no overlap, but a tremendous amount of compatibility with these products. And we could bring these products both to the US market, products and services, I should say, both the US market and around the world. And I think um, also what we've been able to offer that's been really compelling only in the last few months, we only completed this acquisition in May, uh, is really offering that, that true one-stop shop right around the world. Uh, where we're offering uh, both the fully automated uh, captioning through uh, EEG's leading uh, Lexi system, uh, the traditional premium uh, quality captioning that AI Media uh, is known for, for for many, many years, delivering accuracy of over 99.5%. Um, but also there's this really interesting spot in the middle, isn't it, with uh, with Smart Lexi that both AI Media had, had, had invented kind of moving down from a premium uh, and that you'd moved into by moving up from, from Lexi and it's this happy place that we meet with Smart Lexi. So hopefully there's someone something for everyone in this, uh, this great product suite. So Phil, thanks very much for joining us and Regina, I'll hand back to you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, Tony and Phil. If you would like to hear about any of these topics uh, or products in more detail, uh, please join us for the NAB virtual event webinar series. We look forward to uh, having you join us. So thank you. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for Closed Captioning 101 Live Video Solutions. This is the final webinar of EEG and AI Media's NAB virtual event webinar series. My name is Regina Valenskaya, and I'm the marketing lead at EEG. The featured speakers for this event are Bill McLaughlin and Kyle Phillips. Bill is the CTO at EEG, and Kyle is the general manager of business development at AI Media. Today, Bill and Kyle will walk through the basics of captioning and share the essentials for making live streams, meetings, and more accessible. I'm now going to pass it over to Bill and Kyle to kick off Closed Captioning 101 Live Video Solutions. Welcome. Hi, welcome everyone. Kyle, you're muted. We need you here. Love the technology. Uh, everybody has to do that to start one of these, right? Um, Thanks so much for joining. Um, and uh, we're really excited to walk you through this live captioning 101. I mean, first off, what is closed captioning? 
And closed captioning is the process of displaying text on, uh, on a screen, as you know, some of you who have enabled the live captions this morning are, are, are able to see. Uh, it's really the transcription of any audio portion of a program as it occurs uh, that can happen in, in real time, as is happening now, or it can happen on recorded videos and content. Think, you know, Netflix or other programs where you enable captions to follow along with, with, the, with the captions. There's also subtitles. And people often ask about what's the difference between closed captions and subtitles. And the way that we look at it is, is we define it as subtitles are just translated closed captions. So again, thinking about Netflix and maybe watching some shows that are in languages other than English and, and turning on the subtitles to, to watch something. Um, in the last 16 months, we've seen a big, big shift to online events and meetings where, where live captions have played a really big role. And we get lots of questions you know, about, you know, how do, we, how do we deliver live captions? And you know, some of the first question, one of the first questions we might get from people is, why caption at all? Um, why, why do we need to caption? And you know, in some cases, you do need to caption. And uh, you know, that, that point at the bottom, maintaining compliance with FCC or ADA regulations, uh, depending on the event and depending on your situation, you may be required to provide captioning. So that's one reason. Uh, but you know, the better reason is it's, it's the right thing to do, both from an accessibility standpoint, making sure that those attendees who are deaf or hard of hearing have access to your event and to your content. It's, it's inclusive. Uh, another reason though is to reach a, a larger audience, a global audience. We're working with so many different uh, events companies and, and, and corporations who are having global events now enabled by technology now that we use every single day. And they're looking at ways of, you know, localizing their content and translating what's being spoken in, in English or other languages to multiple languages simultaneously. So you can really drive impact of your event by bringing in people from other countries and, and letting them, you know, participate in, in your content and in your event. And then finally, for, for boosting just overall comprehension and, and um, contextual understanding. Sometimes seeing the words on the screen backs up what you're hearing. And again, for those with cognitive processing issues or, or those who can just you know, benefit from turning down the, the, the volume and, and following along, it, it, can really, it can really increase that, that comprehension. Now, needs to consider. What, what do I need to consider when I'm planning an event that needs to be captioned. Um, you know, lots of, lots of things to consider, you know, what type of events are you hoping to caption? You know, where, where does your audience exist? Where, where are they following along? Um, are, they, are they on a social channel like YouTube or Twitch or, or Vimeo? Are they meeting in a, an event platform like Hopin or Brand, Brand Live or Pathable? Um, you know, are, are we considering other languages? And, and, you know, how much is this going to cost me? What is my budget for this type of event? Now, these, these types of questions, when you work with AI media, will we'll walk you through and, and sort of help you navigate. But these are typical ones that, that our clients are asking themselves before they, before they make the move and before they, they go ahead and, and, and book captions. But regardless of, you know, how you answer those questions, you know, as Tony mentioned at the outset in the video, we are really a one-stop shop for all your captioning, transcription, and, and translation solutions. So whether you're using automatic speech captions or having uh, the, your event live captioned by a professionally trained human captioner, as, as we are today, um, we have options for you at, at different price points and, and accuracy levels. We also have different options for how we're delivering the captions and, and how those are appearing uh, you know, in your screen, how you know, the, the technology from EEG that allows the easy display of captions um, into your, your live events, uh, whether they're in person or, or virtual is, is you know, a, a big part of that, that, that one shop model. And so when we think about you know, the, the different options and the different questions that you might ask yourself. This slide, I think, gives you an idea of the
the type of events that we support um, and the types of formats that, that, that support those. So, you know, in-person events, virtual events, um, hybrid events. You, you hear that word a lot recently because so many events are doing a combination of an in-person, maybe a stripped down smaller in-person these days, and then a larger virtual conference. And sometimes those are happening simultaneously. Um, recorded content, broadcasting, you know, sporting events, audio only events, and then captioning formats like um, you know, human captions, uh, subtitles, automatic speech, even American Sign Language interpretation. Uh, and then, you know, multilingual supporting different languages that you see on the screen. These are some of the ones that we, we typically translate on a daily basis, but there are, there are many, many more. But, you know, what it really boils down to are two questions um, that you ask yourself. You see all this text on the screen. Uh, it's really, you know, who's performing the transcription? Um, is it a person? Um, is it a machine? Is it a, a combination? And then how is the captioning reaching the audience? And at the, at the bottom here, you sort of see the different ways that we're, we're delivering captions to an audience using, using the technology in place. Now, one of the, the, the uh, as I said, one of the, the ways that we are delivering captions into, uh, into events is through live streams. And I'm gonna turn over to Bill because he's really our, our live stream guru <laughs> as our chief technology officer and, and coming from EEG and developing a lot of this technology. Um, Bill, tell us more about delivering captions into a live stream. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's one of the first places where, you know, a lot of newcomers to captioning are coming from, right? Because, um, you know, in the broadcast world, it's uh, typically something where captioning has been required in a lot of places for a long time. But there's, you know, a lot of new live events and, um, you know, companies are trying to up their game and add captioning and translation to live events really all the time. And Falcon provides a pretty low cost, easy to onboard way uh, to just to just start doing it for, you know, for a single event or for a series of events. And, you know, you can move up to a permanent subscription channel on it. Um, if you're doing regular events, as you get comfortable with the workflow. Um, so Falcon works with delivering a video stream to platforms that are basically one to many broadcast platforms, you know, like Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, uh, you know, Vimeo or live stream, these types of platforms that are not quite conferencing, but more of, of broadcast, um, you know, and will include features like social integration, um, search, VOD recording. And once you get the captions on that, they should stay on that. So on the next slide, we have a bit of a block diagram to show you how that really works. And if you're producing a streaming live event, what you'll be used to is that you have a uh, place where your stream is originating. And that could be a software or virtual studio program like Telestream Wirecast or OBS, uh, an open source platform, or you know, live stream a bunch of other brands, or it could be hardware. You could have um, you could have SDI or NDI or other video formats, and they could be going into a hardware encoder that you know pr prepares an RTMP stream typically to go to a live platform. You know, again, like Facebook or YouTube. Um, so you're used to putting the Facebook or the YouTube stream key and URL into that streaming encoder and sending the video out to there. And so if you want to add captions, all you need to do is add our Falcon technology um, in the middle, essentially. And it'll only delay the stream by about an extra second. Um, and what you're going to do is you have an account on eegcloud.tv, which is you know, easy to sign up for, and then you can you can pay for events either uh, with a credit card or by arrangement with our sales team. Um, but you'll receive a stream key and an ingest URL from Falcon, the same as you would from the end stream. And so then it's possible to direct your streaming encoder at the event site to Falcon. The captions will be injected in a standards compliant way that's compatible with 
you know, dozens of different video platforms internally to Falcon. And uh, you can apply Lexi captions to that through a self-service workflow on EEG Cloud, or you can book human captioning from AI Media or even from another preferred provider that uses the ICAP network. And you'll be able to get those captions injected into the video stream in real time with Falcon. And then they're going to pass on to the end platform, which is responsible for, you know, again, everything that that platform would typically do for your stream compatibility with different devices, integration with your social channels, uh, even things like advertising insertion. It's really all the same, except you've added Falcon in order to add the captions before you've went to your final destination. So what I'm hearing, Bella, the big difference here is we're, we're just, we're just sticking Falcon in the middle of that. I don't need to have any sort of hardware. Uh, I don't need to, you know, configure any physical unit instead of sending directly to YouTube or Vimeo or, or other platforms, I'm sending to Falcon and then Falcon is sending along that stream with either the That's automatic. Right. Yeah. yeah. So this can be a fully virtualized workflow. Um, you also have the option, of course, of using a more traditional hardware closed caption encoder on your, you know, at your event site in your video facility, and then converting those captions through the streaming encoder. Uh, a lot of streaming encoders support a feature like that. If you have a hardware caption encoder, that's a good option. But especially for a smaller, you know, more introductory production, uh, there might be little or no physical or on-prem infrastructure associated with the production. It could be as simple as a, you know, as a camera hooked up to, to a laptop and the laptop uses a virtual studio and, and sends video to the cloud. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's fully virtual and fully compatible with that kind of software system. So very, very low barrier, low, very easy entry into, into adding captions into a stream there. I think we had a, a, a customer, uh, a vintage that sort of illustrates some of the things that they were looking to do recently transitioning from in-person to virtual events. Can, can you tell us about that? Yeah, and, and this was, you know, we, we did an EEG case study with, with one of our great partners and uh, Eventage is kind of doing live and in-person events production for a pretty wide variety of different customers. Um, you know, they started finding as, as a lot of People in production have found that, you know, clients asking for captioning can go over time from being just one client that has this and, and you need to do some research to something where you realize, oh, a lot of our clients are interested in learning more about this. And, you know, actually, it's something that it's a it's a solution that if you're in the production space is pretty easy to develop an expertise in, I think, and then be able to make that a value add. Uh, on your service, that that's one of the things that you can provide is you'll provide the connections and know how uh, to do captioning. Um, and, you know, uh, Eventage did a really nice job on this. And, and you know, we, we did about a dozen streams in the event that, that we worked on the case study together with. Um, and, you know, it was a mix of Falcon and Lexi. The Lexi automatic captioning uh, can really do a very quality job for a lot of types of business events that get produced. Um, and yeah, that was, it's a, you know, great company. And, you know, one of our, uh, you know, sometimes honestly at EEG with our equipment, we work with some of the, you know, biggest broadcasting names and, you know, channels that, uh, you know, just tens of millions of people are watching. It's also really exciting to do, you know, more, you know, local scale events and corporate events and, you know, really, really get to bring more captions to people kind of right where they live and, you know, not just on the biggest budget television broadcasting. Yeah, it's, it's been it's been very exciting. I know many, uh, particularly over the last year and a half, the number of event companies who are doing exciting uh, virtual work and and uh, who are who are able to get a solution quickly for their for their clients and, and their events. Um, talk to me a bit though when when we're doing the in person and the uh, and the virtual streaming at the same time because um, if I'm streaming, there's going to be a bit of a lag. There's always a lag whether we're inserting captions or not. How do I make sure that the captions in venue match 
match the speaker <laughs> and, and, yeah. and I'm not waiting 20 seconds for the, for the YouTube to follow along with the captions. Which, which are not going to right, be exactly. Use. So when you're when you're yeah. doing in site on site captions, you'll want to use a somewhat different solution than something like Falcon that involves taking the video out to the cloud and then playing it on a solution like Facebook that's in the cloud. And the whole, you know, the delays on this kind of build up to the point where if someone's watching that on their device, um, you know, there's there's a significant amount of discord between what's happening, you know, in front of your eyes and what's happening on the screen. So it's not really a good way to do accessibility. And so when you're using in person events, what's good is that it's easy to take a hardware encoder um, that can do SDI video, and it's easy to either use that instead of Falcon in those cases, or even when there's an important use case for both, you can chain them both through the same ICAP access code, which means that the same captioner can access the Falcon and the hardware encoder. And essentially you'll get the on-site and the cloud captions. And you know that will have the same service cost and the same service setup. It won't really be any more difficult. Yeah. Um, so the dedicated product we have um, for the AV and event space is the AV610. And the way that that's a little bit different than a broadcasting closed caption encoder um, is that it specializes in open captions and putting the captions directly on the screen. And it can do some things with the captions on the screen that you can't do with a traditional broadcast closed caption setup. Um, so you can create at the producer side uh, effects with the video, like you can fold back a video slide a bit um, and scale it to leave space for the captioning, where the captioning won't interfere with anything on the slide, the way you see in this picture, where if you had the captions overlaying, it would interfere with your ability to read the slide. But so you bring the captions down into a separate space um, on the reinforcement monitor uh, to give them their own space. Um, the product also supports outputs where you don't even have to have an input video. And if you just wanted to um, put on a background image related to your event, make the text extra large, and then put this out to an HDMI monitor, you can basically have a, a standalone caption screen, which in a lot of cases you might put off to the side of the stage, kind of away from the speaker. Um, you know, obviously too far in the peripheral vision is not perfect, but essentially that gives you an ability to have captions there. Um, anybody that's interested in using the captions, it's helping them understand the presentation, will be able to look to the left or right when they need to and see the presentation screen. Um, or you can put it behind the speaker in a case where you want everyone's eyes up front and center, and that's not going to interfere with, with other visuals. Yeah, we, we have so many different use case scenarios where there's, where there's multiple, you know, there, there's both live streams and, and in person. And, and what I'm hearing here is lots of different options, because depending on whether this is a a, a commencement or convocation ceremony for a college, or whether it's 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 a conference that's both in person and virtual. There's going to be an option with captions that are timed perfectly and visible to people, even if there's multiple PowerPoint slides <laughs> and different speakers coming in with 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 uh, different uh, visuals. Uh, I know there was a recent one where we delivered with um, both a live stream and and there were about 120 different rooms. Wondered if you could yeah, well, I mean, you, you say recent, that. and this is one of the the last uh, the last kind of big case studies events we honestly did pre COVID, and uh, mm. hopefully we'll get those big events rolling back soon. But but yeah, I mean, we this conference was um, essentially a hundred and twenty simultaneous live breakout room uh, technology conference, and basically with a combination of the on screen in room captions at each breakout room and captions you know going out to an api on the uh, on the cloud video system that was running the conference um, we were really able to do a lot of cool things and at a pretty enormous scale um, you know for example when you walk into the hall there's videos of of all the different breakout rooms put on a big uh multi-monitor and actually with the closed captions turned on and you know this actually means that you can kind of uh 
go into the lobby, you can see a lot of things happening. Uh, you can you can read the captions. I mean, not not all 120 of them in one <laughs> in one view, obviously, but you can kind of say actually, oh, what's what's going on in the different sessions that are in this hall zone? Like, what what are they up to? Is this something of interest? Where do I want to go next? So it's yeah. an example in a way of really using the captions not just for accessibility and compliance, but as a kind of directory or even a search feature mm. that's helping people get to the content that they want to get to and get the most out of the conference. That's very cool. So it's like drawing them in by seeing they can see keywords and it's like, ah, I want to go into that room. It's it's interesting with what they're yeah, saying. If you've ever been, if you don't want to go to the conference and just choose only by, you know, the speaker's face because you'll, you'll, you'll wind up, you won't <laughs> wind up in the right sessions at all. Right. Yeah. No, I think I think that's that's really cool. And again, cost effectiveness shows up there. I know we'll we'll talk a little bit about different options that we have, and 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 you know that that's always a big question in people's mind. But you know, when we talk about cost effectiveness here, it's it's having that again the in person and hybrid potentially using you know in this case one captioner to to listen into one event, not having multiple having to bring in one captioner for live and another captioner for in person you are talking about significant cost savings and, and um, you know, just making it that much easier for, for people. Um, so, you know, in-person streams, both of those, a uh, lot of use cases, as Bill said, that was pre-COVID. Um, what's happening these days and, and how are we captioning into virtual meetings? Well, I mean, I, I'd say we probably hundreds of hours per day we're, we're delivering with, with Lexi and Smart Lexi, probably thousands of hours of captioning we're delivering into virtual meetings every single day now. Um, you know, some of the common meeting rooms or meeting uh, technologies are, are Zoom, as we're using today, uh, and, and WebEx and Adobe Connect and, and some others, uh, as well as now Microsoft Teams. Teams has never had third party captioning integration, but that is something that's coming in November. And we've, we've been part of helping to develop that. Um, so we can deliver captions into virtual meetings, uh, but even in cases where there wasn't or there isn't uh, a dedicated uh, captioning component, like uh, Google Meet, for example, um, you know, where, where captions aren't able to be integrated, live human captions into the session, uh, into the platform, um, we can still deliver captions through uh, our dedicated AI Live caption viewer or through stream text. Um, and simply our, our captioners will join those meetings, listen to the audio, and then deliver those captions. Now, when we talk about the different, the different options, um, automatic speech, human captioning, uh, quality levels, accuracy levels, um, the Cheapest is going to be just out of the box ASR. Uh, that's free, uh, and uh, you know, free is <laughs> free is free. A lot of people like free, and, and free can be good. Uh, free can give you a, a good result um, if you have good audio. Um, depending on what's being talked about, um, the subject matter, you can get to maybe a 90, 91 percent uh, accuracy with. YouTube captions or automatic captions in Zoom or Teams or, or other, other technology. Uh, but as soon as you start to get into cases where, you know, uh, the speaker names are important to differentiate, or in instances where you need to have uh, brand names or there's technical jargon, uh, I think about engineering and medical conferences and technical conferences where automatic speech just doesn't deliver. And in fact, the, the quality degrades significantly. I mean, even in a 90% accuracy scenario, every 10th word is gonna be incorrect. Now that's fine for your audience, that's, that's great. But you know, if you're looking to scale to something which is closer to accurate, but still affordable, there are some ASR options that we, that we offer. One of which is Lexi, which has been used for a number of years uh, it can, uh, Lexi uses uh, topic models where clients can build out the, the terminology and jargon uh, and speaker names that are used in their sessions to get to about a 95, 96% uh, accuracy level on the captions. 
We also now have Smart Lexi, which is something Tony talked about at the beginning of the webinar. Smart Lexi sort of builds on the, the, the technology of Lexi to go even further to about a 97, 98% accuracy by using uh, human curated custom dictionaries. So the same uh, captioning staff who work with us on delivering premium captioning uh, are also uh, you know, able to take their technical know-how and help build out uh, the, the smart Lexi to deliver at a, at, a, at a higher rate of accuracy. And then premium live captions delivered by professionally trained human captioners, uh, whether they're stenographers, re-speakers delivering at the highest level of accuracy, 99% accuracy or above in, in many cases. Um, so, you know, which one works for you? It really depends on what your needs are. Some of those conferences, uh, depending on, 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 your, on your budget and what you need, some of those conferences, because they are high, highly visible, um, high stakes, uh, will always use human captioners. Uh, and again, we, we've got ways to deliver that and provide that uh, for you. Uh, others will look to combine, you know, a combination of Lexi, Smart Lexi, and, and human. Um, but, you know, this is why we, we talk about a one-stop shop and having options for, for every, every budget. Good example of virtual meetings, um, both in terms of a client of ours that, that uses us to support uh, employees in their meetings is, is Microsoft, um, using our, our human captioning for a number of years now to provide uh, accessible options for their, their employees, as well as for their internal events and client-facing events. We will, we will caption those as well. Those are all taking place virtually. Um, they've been taking place in Teams for a number of years now, uh, and we've been delivering the captions into our caption viewer for people to follow along with. Um, as I mentioned earlier, though, rolling out this fall, I think it's next month, um, Microsoft Teams will have live captioning available right within the, the Teams interface. And that's something that we are uh, excited about uh, being able to, to deliver now because so many, so many companies uh, use Microsoft as their, as their platform and their collaboration tool. So um, that's a really nice use case for us. Um, another use case in the virtual space is in the classroom. Now, for many classrooms over the last year and a bit, those classrooms have been Zoom or, or other online um, meeting platforms. Uh, as schools this fall started to transition back to either full-time in the classroom or a combination of in the classroom and, and virtual, um, we are providing, uh, we're still providing services to those students virtually. Uh, the way that works is the student has their laptop and a microphone picking up the audio from the room, or we're tapping into the learning management system or the technology that's used in place at that institution. And we are, uh, one of our captioners is listening in remotely and providing the captions back to a student where they can follow along in, in real time. It's usually a three to four second delay to deliver to that platform. And you can see, uh, you know, sort of what the platform looks like here with students having real agency in terms of how they view the captions in, in their class, um, the, the, the size of the text and the font and how quickly the captions are delivered. Um, you know, that's, that's a really big, um, a big deliverable here for, for the way that we're, we're bringing captions into education. Um, and a couple of examples of that, I, I was gonna pick just one, but uh, I picked three uh, that, that, that came to my head yesterday when I was <laughs> going through and thinking about who are some of the colleges, different parts of uh, across the country and, and Ryerson is in Canada, um, you know, different uh, colleges that are using live captioning in the classroom or even to support students um, outside of the classroom. Um, you know, so we will, we will provide live captioning to students for their actual lectures and, and their tutorials, but we also do a ton of captioning for 
um, orientations and events that take place on campus, um, staff trainings, uh, teaching and learning summits, um, convocation ceremonies. It's been a growing segment for the last few years. And even as you know, there's been that pivot to online only graduation ceremonies uh, in, in the last year, uh, we've been seeing a lot of um, a lot of push for and expansion into into live captioning so that not just the students but their families are are supported um, and can follow along with the ceremonies in in real time using the captions. I'd also say for those convocation ceremonies, we're seeing a lot of that multilingual or multilingual um, translation uh, come up. Uh, for families who uh, maybe for whom English is not a first language, uh, but can follow along with the ceremony by simply adding that that translation. So another another use case there. Um, wanted to talk. Wanted to get your questions and uh, wanted to hear from you. But be, before we do, just wanted to say in conclusion that you know we do have a number of captioning options for any need, format, or budget. If there's something we haven't heard about. We'll sit down and talk to you about it. Bill and I have been on a number of calls in the last few weeks with customers looking at a different way of delivering captions or even booking captions. Um, and so, you know, we're always excited to, to sit down and talk to you. The other thing I would say is that we are not just booking in captioners or providing you with technology to deliver captioning solutions, but we are, we're there to help you deliver. Uh, we have a dedicated team of service people who will walk you through whatever you need to know about setting up Falcon or setting up one of your hardware encoders or making sure that your captioners are in the sessions and that we're getting all the prep materials that, that you need. Um, we're there to help and that's the core of, of what we do. And Bill, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to, to add to that. No, that's that's excellent, Kyle. Um, you did a great job. I, I think that um, th this webinar was intended, especially uh, in the enterprise, university, and corporate video spaces, to kind of give a really good basic introduction to what's going on with closed captioning and what's possible. Uh, based on some feedback, we tried to go a little bit less into the deep uh, technical details or, or different products than, than some of our webinars, but try to just look at the range of different uh, outcomes you could be looking to drive. Um, so definitely happy to take any more stuff uh, in the questions about some specifics or, um, you know, email us, visit our website. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of really detailed information there, but sometimes I know we speak to people who say all this detailed information, it's, it's overwhelming, you know, please, please, please yeah. talk to me like I haven't heard about captioning before and, and let's figure out what we can do here. And, and so that's great to have an opportunity to do this. Um, yeah. And I, I saw in the chat, we've had um, viewers in the webinar from as far away as Kenya, and Columbia. So that's that's pretty awesome too. Thanks guys. Yeah, that's 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 really cool. Yeah, and, and you know, that's a really good point. Sometimes people just want to talk to a human being. <laughs> you know, there, there's great information online and hopefully we provide you on our websites with some great information where you can you can find the answers that you might need, but at some point you just want to talk to somebody, um, there's an easy way to to reach us. Um, I'm going to turn back to Regina, who I know uh, has been fielding some questions that have come in. Regina? Yes, thank you. Uh, so if you have any questions about any of the topics or the solutions that were uh, discussed today, please feel free to pop those into the Q&A tool at the bottom of your Zoom window. But we are going to go ahead and get started with the Q&A session. And a question that came in from somebody who had signed up for the webinar uh, they had said that they just need closed captioning occasionally on Adobe Connect, Zoom, and Google Classroom. So curious to get your thoughts on what it what it looks like to only occasionally uh, need caption content. Yeah, I mean, it's um, we we don't typically don't make somebody sign a contract 
for, for working with us. So if this is something where you just need captions every once in a while, you have a lot of every once in a while customers. So they have a webinar every once in a while or a meeting that might come up where somebody requests captions. Uh, we can do that. We simply book in what you need, when you need it, um, and, and you pay as you go. Um, we, you book it in, we deliver it, and then we, we send you an invoice afterwards. So it's really, really simple. Yeah, and a typical, you know, we can often staff events with, you know, the typical number given would be about three days of of pre pre notice you know if you're setting up an account for the first time you probably should should ask a little bit sooner than that but um but yeah it doesn't it doesn't have to be planned a very great time in advance yeah someone says that they have had some issues with human captioners uh which has pushed their customers to wanting to rely on lexi much more than human captioning. So the question is, do you see Smart Lexi pushing out human captioning uh, given the increased uh, accuracy and costs saved? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, I, 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 I hope the human captioners, they had issues with RNAi media captioners. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I mean, I guess there, there are sometimes issues everywhere. Um, but yeah, I mean, you have to, you know, obviously with automatic captioning being so available. I think uh, when we're supplying human captions, it's really important to be providing, you know, a really head and shoulders experience above the automatic captions. And, and that, that's the quality of the captions and, and their accuracy and their timing. That's also got to be the, you know, the services, the on-time performance, um, every part of that, you know, I mean, I think there is, you um, there is a tendency to move to automatic um, when you just feel that getting a human captioner involved is is too cumbersome. You have to book it too far in advance. You know, it, it's like you have to, you know, you have to provide too many details, um, and that can be, you know, we, we talk a lot about accuracy, we talk a lot about cost, but that ease of doing business is something that automatic solutions, including the ones we offer like Lexi, um, they do have an advantage that you can, you can just, it just starts happening completely on, on a whim from the customer standpoint, you know, you don't really need any advance notice at all. And that's a cool benefit of the solution. Um, but, you know, for those events where you're going to want that more completely premium accuracy and also going to want um, a real human being to work with you on on the event setup um, and the issues you know it's uh, it can be a double-edged sword right sometimes we go for just convenience and just pressing that button uh, but other times we really want a human to work with us so I, I I think that both types of captioning are going to continue to exist for a long time yeah. I think I think there are there are always, um, you know, especially in the last year, we've seen such a, a huge demand and increase for for human captioners, uh, and and in cases in some cases where we couldn't keep up with the demand, and last fall in particular had to say no, um, so you know to, to to certain events if if we didn't get enough notice, uh, so now I, I think we we do feel that we have something where we can deliver highly accurate. In some instances, but but we are not certainly not going to be putting any captioners out of work. There's a huge, <laughs> huge demand um, and, uh, and and a huge place for for the incredible work that that they do. Um, it's yeah. it's it's just nice to have options uh, for for last minute and uh, for for other use cases that you know, other budgets. Someone asks about Falcon, saying that we say that it's affordable, but they want to know what exactly that means, how is price calculated, and for example, what would an average uh, li a one hour live stream event cost? $10 million. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, uh, no. It sounds, like there it sounds like there must have been a lot of prep time on that stream. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, there are a couple of components of the cost, and that's maybe part of why, um, you know, looking at the websites for EEG or AI media, it's not always totally transparent just exactly what something's going to cost. Um, for Falcon, the, the lowest 
cost for, for a Falcon and Lexi like event package kind of solution um, would be to buy the monthly subscription on Falcon as a standalone, uh, which is a $399 monthly package currently. Um, so then there would be a question of the services and whether that was going to be, you know, booked through an AI media captioner using Lexi and those have different hourly costs and, um, it can depend, you know, does your, you know, is your event, uh, you know, we joked about the prep, but it's kind of, you know, is your event sort of one and done with an hour or, you know, do you, would you want the captioner to, um, you know, to attend, to attend rehearsals? Do you need to do technical qualification of the Falcon solution that's going to require you to kind of, you know, use it for more than just one day? So there are some different factors and, you know, whether you own the technology already, for example, you can rent a hardware closed captioning coder from EEG, most places in the United States, uh, for about $1,000 for a two week period. If you own one of those, then you're not paying anything extra for that for the event. So it can depend a lot on what technologies are in use. And, and, and typically, you know, when you talk about costs for either a uh, human or, or the machine language, it's, it's a function of time and hours. So if, if we're talking about hours, and, and all the variables that, that Bill talked about, you know, we, we would quote you on an hourly basis and, and, you know, on a per minute basis or prorated per minute basis after that. Uh, so once we know all of the, the particulars, we can get you a quote pretty quickly uh, and walk you through the different options for, for what you need, because they, you know, it, it, it does vary depending on, on which are there, but, but you know, it, it can be a very easy and, and low price point to get into whether it's human or 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 the um, Lexi and smart Lexi. And someone in the chat asked a great question uh, saying uh, asking how COVID-19 has affected the uptake of AI and EEG solutions specifically for universities. And if so, how long will it take before things become normal, especially with vaccine rollouts in terms of captioning? Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly in, in the last year, we've, we've seen a, a sharp increase in demand for, for live captioning in, in the classroom. Um, still, I think very much a, um, a, a demand for human captioning uh, because of ADA requirements and, and um, equity issues around providing uh, the same access to content um, and, and high accuracy. That, that, that goes into that. Um, there, there are potential ways that we may be to, able to uh, alleviate some of the burden on, on the human captioning with uh, the smart Lexi in the classroom and, and uh, are looking at ways to deliver that soon. Um, we, we're also seeing in the case of some events where people are making use of uh, automatic speech technology to deliver captions. Um, but, but even with the shift now to a um, back to the classroom in, in many parts of the, the country, um, there's still a very high demand for, for live captioning of, of some kind. So, you know, for, for us, um, for AI Media, it's having some options to deliver captioning where, where we just don't have a human captioner available. Um, it hasn't been the case recently, but, but certainly last fall at, at the height of COVID, um, that any last minute requests that came in were, were often very difficult to fill. Uh, now we do have a, a backup option for people where we can say, okay, if we don't get coverage, can we, can we bring in uh, Lexi or can we, can we set up a smart Lexi instance? And, and that's a viable option. Um, but I, I see the demand is still very strong from the uh, university and college partners that, that are out there right now. Uh, are there any plans for EEG to host their Falcon engines on multiple server boxes? Uh, currently, Fa Falcon engines are on the same RTM stream, stream, but different stream keys, indicating that engines are being run on the same physical server. I believe this is a bill question. Yeah, so I mean that's that's not a hundred percent true, but um, you know, essentially 
Falcon is currently available in, I think, five different um, geographic regions. So in each of those regions, uh, you're definitely streaming to to different infrastructure that's local to those regions. And that's important for the stream quality. Um, you can create, you can have fully redundant streams by having two channels linked together in ICAP in separate regions. And of course, this works best when you choose two regions that are both relatively close to where you're working. Um, but for example, in the United States, we have East Coast and West Coast channels. So honestly, both of those locations really work pretty well for, you know, normal, you know, standard five megabit per second, 10 megabit per second resolution video. I'm on a good internet connection. You're not really going to have a problem if you're anywhere in the United States, typically doing a stream to either the East or the West Coast. So you can get redundancy. Um, on the on those two servers and on those two regions and on you know a significant amount of the network path um by using an east and a west coast server and if you have two internet connections out of your site you can have almost full complete a b redundancy on the falcon um so so there are some options for that i mean even even within the region there's you know there's load balancing to different worker servers when you actually get behind that initial entry point. Um, but if you're looking to make sure that you have two streams that are, you know, kind of on independent infrastructure, then using the multi-region capability is, is the best option. Great. Uh, I, I hope that I am paraphrasing this question as the attendee had intended to ask it. Uh, so this question is about the Lexi automatic captioning service. Uh, asking if it can be used uh, simultaneously through Google or Microsoft, for example, uh, for French language captioning, uh, or if it can, uh, if it works differently depending on what platform you're using it with. Yeah, we do. We do have the power through Lexi to leverage uh, tech from several different backend suppliers to provide captions and. Part of the reason is the language lists differ and the language quality differs um, from these different providers. Um, for there's for French, we have um, we have at least compatibility with uh, the IBM and the Amazon backends right now. We may have some other backends for French online or coming in soon. So you know, typically with Lexi, the customer is just going to you just choose a language and you know we'll use the we'll use the engines and technologies and combinations that have tested best for us and we'll work with that um, but when you have a specific supplier in mind or when you want to test suppliers against each other because you want to make sure that you're getting a supplier that's right for you know your language and your content and I mean we, we can certainly work with the customer on that as well. Great. Uh, so it looks like we have time for just one more question. Uh, and that is, what's the best way to schedule captioning for a multi-day virtual conference? Uh, because our client prefers human captioning. Yeah, I mean, the, the best way is to reach out to us uh, direct. Uh, we will sit down, we'll, we'll jump on a Zoom meeting with you or jump on a call with you. Uh, we'll look at your run of show. We'll, we'll make sure we understand exactly what you need. Uh, and we can then, you know, schedule that into our system for you. We can set up a, a test time ahead of time to make sure that you've got, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're delivering the way that you and your audience expect to deliver um, and that we've answered all, all of your questions. We do a lot of multi-day uh, conferences, particularly in the fall and in the spring. Um, this, is, this is big time conference season for us. Uh, and we do a lot of consultations every day. Uh, they can be very quick. We can schedule those in for whenever you need them and we can get you booked and up to speed pretty quickly. Thanks for that. Uh, and that brings us to the end of the webinar. So uh, thank you everybody who could join us today for Closed Captioning 101 Live Video Solutions. And a big thank you to Bill and Kyle and the, the captioning team behind the scenes. Um, so if we didn't get to your questions, we will follow up with you soon after the webinar. And if you have any questions 
or would like to learn more, uh, please reach out to sales at eegent.com or sales at ai-media.tv. Thank you all again and have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.